Well, a year later, Labor won the federal election. Although it had attracted only 32% of the primary vote, it proceeded as if it had a clear mandate to carve up our electricity sector and replace it with unproven, expensive, and in many ways archaic technology in pursuit of net zero. Here is Anthony Albanese trying to spin the win into a mandate barely a month after winning the election. We announced uh, last December uh, what our policy framework would be. At that time, we released the most comprehensive modelling of any policy by any opposition since Federation. Most comprehensive, eh, Albo? Well, included in that most comprehensive report is the now infamous claim that, quote, an average electricity bill for an average household is projected to be $275 lower by 2025 and $378 lower by 2030, unquote. Instead, energy prices in Queensland, New South Wales and South Australia will rise by about 20% and in Victoria by about 30% from July 1. These figures would have been almost twice as high if Albanese hadn't slapped a cap on the price of coal and gas, which will cost the government, in other words, you, the taxpayer, hundreds of millions of dollars in rebates to resource companies. So you won't see the figure come up on your energy bill but you'll pay for it anyway via the government's rebates. The same report said the government could rewire the nation, connecting urban areas to new windmill farms and broadacre paddocks covered in solar panels for a lazy $20 billion. But given the standard cost blowout of government infrastructure projects, such as Snowy Hydro 2.0, you'd have to say the final figure will be closer to $60 billion. But there's another element to this that is very rarely discussed, and it's the moral one. The solar panels with which the government wants to blanket our beautiful countryside are reportedly made by Uyghur slaves in China. And most of the cobalt used in batteries installed in cars and the battery storage facilities to back up renewables is dug out of the ground by children working for pittance in horrific conditions in Congo. Energy Minister Chris Bowen and Prime Minister Albanese might think they are doing the moral thing by trying to convert our electricity grid to supposedly renewable energy but they conveniently overlook other moral issues such as this one. So why don't they let us decide which way to go? The report the Labor Party produced before the election is fundamentally flawed, so they can hardly claim a mandate for it. Yet their plan to replace almost all of the nation's energy infrastructure is arguably the most ambitious single project ever embarked upon by an Australian government. So here's a tip, Albo. Postpone the referendum about an Indigenous voice to Parliament, which if successful will achieve nothing but create a new class of people based on race with more power than the rest of us anyway, and instead do what Berlin did and put your net zero policy to the people in a referendum.